Number 1 When I was 16, my parents and I moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I was soon hired at an Italian restaurant as a busboy. On my very first night, I was busy cleaning tables in the dining area when I was motioned over to a table. At the table were two men. I would say they were both in their late 30s, dressed like fairly typical middle class guys. Earlier when I would pass by their table, I had noticed they were sitting very still without conversation and didn't seem to be very animated. Anyway, I go to their table as requested. The man who motioned me gestured to lean in closer to him. I assumed he wanted to ask me to get his server or needed something. So I bend slightly forward, and he asks me this question. You ever had your initials carved into your forehead? In hindsight, I should have said something snarky, like, well, not that I can remember, but I was too taken aback by such a random and weird question. I know I can be clueless when it comes to social cues or jokes, so I chuckled awkwardly and searched his face for any signs of humor, but all I got was a blank stare. His friend didn't say a word and didn't even look at me. I shook my head and walked away completely baffled. I walked into the kitchen and found the server of that table. I told her what happened and asked her what was going on with those two guys. Oh yeah, I don't know, but they're fucking weird. Regardless, I continued my duties and cleaned the tables. I tried avoiding that table, but the men remained there for quite some time, just as inanimate as before. I don't even recall them eating anything. Maybe they did when I was working around the restaurant. When I was cleaning a table near them, the same man motioned me over once again. I was torn. I really didn't want a repeat of that same experience, but I was afraid to say no to a customer. It was my first night on the job, and I didn't want anyone to complain to my manager, saying that I ignored them. So I went over to the table. Again, he wanted me to lean close so he could tell me something. I don't know why I did. He said, You ever had two men pin you down? Grab your throat? That was it. I immediately proceeded to nope right away from those two guys. I'm not sure if they were really high on something, but the flat deadbeat tone of his voice and their blank stares really unsettled me. I went immediately to the general manager who just kind of shrugged it off. I worked until 2 a.m., and as ridiculous as it sounds, I had to ask the bartender to watch me get back to my car safely in the dark parking lot. I tell a lot of people this story, and while it's quite bizarre and funny when I explain it, I was disturbed by the encounter that evening. It was a pretty bad first impression of Florida. Number 2 Last year I was temporarily a host at a restaurant which was not very popular, so we were not often busy. One midday shift, I hadn't seen a customer in a while when this old short stocky man came in and asked for a table near a window. I sat him in the section of my friend Mariah. Each waitress had their own 3-4 to four table section of the restaurant to keep the number of customers being seated fair. Mariah was college age and this man was easily around 65 or older. My host stand was close enough to their table to hear the conversation that got weirder by the minute. He kept mentioning that he worked for a towing service. He looked far past retirement age and kept complimenting her. It was seemingly innocent things like, You have a pretty smile. Or, You're a great waitress. To which he kind of nervously laughed about and said something to the effect of, Aw, oh, thank you. Thinking he was just a lonely old man trying to be nice, but then his compliments just got downright strange. With a body like that, you must have a boyfriend. Or, I wish my ex-wife looked like you when we met. At one point, she felt him try to grab her ass as she was walking away from him. She got so uncomfortable that she ended up having our male friend Chad finish waiting on the man giving the excuse that her shift was over, when really she went in the kitchen and literally hid from him until he left. When Chad came to be his waiter, the guy lost any cheerfulness in his face and looked genuinely angry. 
and I was actually afraid at this point, thinking that he might try to prey on me next. I was around the same age as Mariah, and the only one in the same area of the restaurant as this guy, but he didn't. He just quickly finished eating while hardly speaking or looking at Chad, and left without saying a word. The guy left a tip of five dollars in ones, and wrote Mariah on each one, front and back in pen. I assumed trying to make sure Chad didn't think it was for him. Our manager gave Mariah permission to avoid this guy any time he came in, because of how he behaved. A few days later, he came in and asked for Mariah. Her shift didn't start for over an hour, so I told him that I would have to sit him with someone else, and he refused. He insisted on waiting at a table that was meant to be in her section, and literally sat down prepared to wait for over an hour. I went and got our manager and he told the man that he couldn't let him wait for that long in her section, but he could sit him with another waiter. The man then left without saying anything. The main phone line for the restaurant was at the host stand so we could make reservations, etc. And this guy called me the next day asking to talk to Mariah. I could tell by his voice that it was him, so I played stupid and I said, Can I ask who's calling? And he just responded with, No, put her on. I got my manager and he picked up the phone saying, Hi sir, this is the manager. How can I help you? Pause. Uh, she's not here. Can I take a message? I watched his face when he listened to what the guy said next, and he looked like he was about to throw up. He hung up on the man without saying another word. He wouldn't tell me what the guy said. It was clearly something disgusting aimed at Mariah. We ended up having to tell this guy she didn't work there anymore, so he quit asking for her. After he was told that, he never came back. I have no idea what his problem was, but I hope he never goes back there, for Mariah's sake. Number 3 This story isn't about me, but a co-worker I work with. I work at a TGI Fridays as a waiter. There's this one girl I work with. We'll call her Beth. Beth was a nice girl. If I had to rate her, which I usually don't because every guy has a different taste and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. On a scale of 10, she was a good 7 or 8. So it was pretty obvious she was going to get a lot of attention from our customers. However, when I would greet our customers at the door and show them to our table, there was this one guy who would always ask for Beth. At first, I was okay with it because the customer is always right and also because there were customers who would prefer me over other waiters as well. So I went to get Beth, and she waited him. This was normal. For the first few days, he would come back around the same time for lunch, and I found this normal too, because many people have their favorite places where they eat lunch. After a while, the other waiters and waitresses and I began teasing her about her new boyfriend. Beth would wait on him like she always did, but now he would come in more than once a day. Beth began to feel uncomfortable with it. She would tell me how he would try to make small talk and flirt with her and even gave her his phone number. I laughed because it was funny as hell. The whole conversation went over my head and I told her to just ignore it and take advantage of it because he was giving her pretty hefty tips every time. That was bad advice on my part because she took it and it only got worse. After a couple of months, I got a new work schedule because I had more free time and was able to work more. I began to work from 6 to closing time, which was around 2 a.m. It was probably the best work schedule I ever had because most of the people I talked to at work worked those same hours, including Beth, who also worked from 6 to close. Also because usually after 12 a.m., no one showed up and the manager would either close early or we would just hang out and eat free food until closing time. So closing was fun. But one of our co-workers noticed that there was always a dude waiting outside near a 7-Eleven every day, and sometimes he would be in this blue Civic. Beth, a couple of waiters, and I knew who he was right away, and we filled each other in on who he was. Needless to say, Beth was really scared at this point. Being friends, we decided to help out in any way possible. The days where she didn't have a car, 
I or someone else would offer to drive her home. The days where she did, one of us would walk her to her car, and man, that was the right thing to do. One day when I was walking to my car, this guy came up to me. He introduced himself and asked me a couple of questions. One was if there was a job available. I told him how to apply and that I would tell him if there was a spot open. The other question, however, set off a red flag in my head. He asked me if Beth had a boyfriend and began talking about her and how gorgeous she was and how he wanted to get to know her, etc. I laughed and told him, A girl like her probably has a lot of suitors waiting, and she already has one. Not the best response. <laughs> I texted her about my encounter, and that only contributed to her fear. It got worse. One day she forgot to ask somebody to walk with her to her car, and she went alone. But I ended up following behind, just in case something happened. I followed about 10 steps behind. I watched her get into her car. As I got into my car, I noticed out of the corner of my eye, the blue Civic. She pulled out of the parking lot and everything seemed normal. But he pulled out and started following her, and so did I. I followed far behind so that he wouldn't notice me. The stalker followed her all the way to her house. I texted her to tell her to take the extra long way home because she was being followed and so that I could end up at her house first. She did, and when she pulled up and saw the blue Civic passed by, she was in tears. She hugged me and thanked me for saving her life. I went back to my car and stayed for 30 minutes, just in case, but the guy never came back. My friend Beth still works at TGI Fridays, but not at 6 to close anymore, and the creepy guy stopped showing up after a while too, and I can only hope it stays that way. There's always a reason to be afraid.